Okay, uh, this conversation should be recording right now. Uh, just as a little bit of administrative stuff, we just want to make sure that uh, you know that you, we are recording this conversation and with your consent we would like to disclose footage of this particular video to the AGM comp uh, to the iGEM competition rather uh, through various social me uh, media resources such as YouTube, Twitter, um, at the discretion of yourself and Bio Alberta. Do you agree with this? Sure, no problem at all. All right, fantastic. So thanks a lot for uh, joining us. Uh, we just wanted to quickly um, talk about what our project was this year, but I guess um, just to begin, I wanted to ask if you don't mind quickly describing what uh, Bio Alberta's mission uh, is. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, Bio Alberta is the uh, industry association for life sciences here in Alberta, mm -hmm. and we're basically all areas of uh, of life sciences, everything from biopharmaceuticals to uh, agricultural, biotech, environmental, uh, bioproducts, um, biofuels, all the way to medical devices and diagnostics. Um, so as an industry association, we represent about 150 member companies and organizations that have an interest in life sciences. We help to market those companies, help the companies grow, help them with their industry development plans, and also act as a uh, advocacy group. Uh, for the life sciences, trying to, to gain a little bit more traction for biotechnology and life sciences here in Alberta. So everything we can do in the land of oil and gas and agriculture to try to grow um, you know, the, the knowledge base industry and the technology industry here in Alberta. Great. Um, so that means you have worked with the oil industry in the past then, yes? We have, uh, we have worked with some of the companies. It hasn't been to the extent that we'd like to see. Um, the reality is in Alberta, the oil companies, uh, oil and gas companies are doing quite well these days. Uh, mm -hmm. Not a heck of a lot of need for them to diversify just yet. Um, they're making good money off of uh, the product that they can pull out of the ground. Many of the oil companies do see um, applications for biotechnology and bioremediation, those type of things, the, kind of a social consciousness. They, they see the social welfare of it all, but mm -hmm. um, you know, the reality is they're they're stakeholder and investor-driven organizations that are looking for return and looking for profit. And if they can find that return right now with typical, uh, with typical technologies and, and the stuff that they have currently running, there's not a lot of auspice for those companies to do anything about it. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, I guess some of them are very, very, very looking like a lot more of them. Right. Um, well, I guess just to explain what we're doing, I'm certain you're familiar with iGEM because uh, you have supported us in the past, I remember. Um, but to explain just quickly what our project is right now, we are trying to actually go for the oil industry, the oil sands tailings ponds. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to design bacteria that can um, detect and destroy various toxins that are found in the tailings ponds and then try and convert them into hydrocarbons uh, to be uh, usable as fuel. And um, basically, uh, we want to try and keep this in a nice little bioreactor system. It's completely enclosed, um, so the organisms can't really escape. Um, but if they do, in the unlikely event that they do, we also implemented a genetic kill switch into them um, that will destroy them uh, if they leave the condition of the bioreactor. Cool. Um, so basically, what we're trying to ask you is um, if you believe that something like this might be useful in the oil science industry, I realize that you've sort of kind of answered that a little bit. Just now, but I yeah I, I think um, you know what I what I was talking about before I think is the uh, what's driving a lot of the, the oil companies here today in today's market. But the reality is, are they going to need technologies like this in the future? Absolutely. I mean, I really I firmly believe that anything biological can help the the oil companies uh, and. The problem is they're often just not aware of, of some of the technologies that might be able to help them. And granted, some of the technologies might be 5, 10, 20 years down the road, mm -hmm. but the reality is if we don't start thinking about it now, um, we're never going to get to that. Right. So, you know, is this something that's a flip? Absolutely. It should. Um, it's just a matter of time, really, until they, uh, they get on board with these type of technologies. Uh, sorry, I was kind of breaking up again. Do you just mind reiterating that? Again. Um, that's still not working. Hmm. Uh, Skype does that sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Um, 
Sorry about that. That seems strange. I never seemed to have this problem earlier. Mm, yeah, that's strange. Um, yeah, I know. All I, I was saying is, um, you know, even though a lot of the oil and gas companies don't necessarily see the opportunity right now within the uh, for the biological applications within the oil sands and the tailings ponds, it's something that a lot of these companies are going to have to be thinking about in the future. Uh, it, it, it really comes down to part of their their social programs, their um, their community outreach, and it may take five years, ten years, twenty years to get some of these technologies uh, properly to market and, and and applicable for these companies. But if we're not thinking about it now, um, we're not on the right road to to commercialize some of these technologies. So it's absolutely something that a lot of these oil and gas companies should be looking at, and and I think. Some of them are. It's just a matter of reaching out to some uh, of the others that uh, that haven't really gone down that path just yet and opening their eyes to it. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have any kind of particular strategies to go about this then, or just I don't know whether something like this already exists in terms of trying to push for um, like this kind of technology to go into the oil sands there. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're like we're trying to, to have synthetic biology go into the oil sands, but of course we don't know anything about the industry, so it makes right. it kind of difficult for us to dip our foot into the field, so to speak. Yeah, true enough, and and um, yeah, we have been involved with some of the larger uh, oil and gas companies. Um, I do sit on uh, on one of the um, committees here in Alberta called the Aztec Foundation, mm -hmm. and there are um, you know members from uh, companies like Syncrude uh, on that foundation. And uh, who, who are very forward thinking in terms of some of the technology applications that they could use within the oil sands. Um, there are a number of other government uh, kind of sponsored uh, uh, forward looking programs uh, that are trying to get some of the other uh, companies, the Shells and the Chevrons and uh, the Suncors involved with uh, technology applications that can be used up in the oil sands. So there are absolutely committees and, uh, and a lot of uh, foundations and, and groups that are looking at these technologies. It's just that right now a lot of them are, are, are viewed as very early stage and not necessarily uh, applicable within the commercial technologies right now. And, and that's understandable. It will take a little bit of time to, uh, to test and prove some, uh, some of the technologies. And the same is true in the world of synthetic biology. Um, these are going to have to be tested and, and tried and, and and put put out in the real field to see if there's uh, proper applications for it. Of course. Um, actually, going along that line, sort of, we are trying to develop this technology to make it a little bit, like, to be sellable, you know. And so, I was just wondering, just from your experience, do you, based on what I've told you about what our project was, do you have any kind of concerns about uh, using this particular technology in the oil sands, or is there... Well, when I looked at uh, uh, the briefing just of what you guys were working on, the one thing that struck me was, um, I, I think, uh, and, and you might, can correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are looking to uh, potentially activate bacteria that's already naturally occurring within the tailings ponds? That's right. Okay, yeah. So, And, and that's probably one thing that I would stress there is, is to make that really apparent either to the customer or to the general public that it's not introducing a new strain of bacteria or anything new to the system. It's uh, it's utilizing uh, bacteria that are already in the tanning ponds and, and, and either activating them or, or, or using them in a different way such that it's not an outside source that's uh, or something new that's being introduced to the environment. That was something right from the start. I wasn't quite sure on that but going through and reading it again it, it looked like that was the case. So just, and, you know, probably in some of your presentations might be a good idea uh, from a public perception point of view, uh, to to stress to the general public that this is this is nothing new. It's just kind of tweaking what's already occurring in the natural environment. Of course. All right. Um, so we were just wondering. Um, also, if I just look through, to make sure everything here. Uh, we were also wondering if you have any kind of things that we should consider for the actual design uh, to kind of benefit or change the perception of our project in the public and private industry. I realize that you've kind of covered that just then by mentioning that we are using native bacteria, but if you have anything, uh, I don't know what, how much you guys have experience with actual physical bioreactors or things like that. Um, yeah, not a lot. I'm, no? I'm not, uh, not an expert by any means on that side of things, but uh, um, you know, I, the only thing I can say is, uh, you know, 
possibly from the, uh, the general acceptance level of either investors or uh, some of the institutions that you might be able to partner with, you know, thinking about the, some of the research councils perhaps or the, uh, the Alberta Innovates groups here within Alberta, there might be some good opportunity to, to partner with those groups and utilize some of the, uh, the expertise that, uh, the scientific expertise that lies with you. And so, um, you know, being able to, uh, you know, I guess to show the, uh, the, the potential impact of this, and, and, and if there were some quantifiable numbers that you could put on this, you know, in one, you know, if you're able to activate one batch of this bacteria, how much, how many square feet or square meters of, uh, of tailings ponds could it impact? Those type of mm -hmm. things. Uh, putting it into real terms of how many days or weeks or months would it take for this bacteria to actually clean up the largest tailings pond? Uh, or those, those type of things can really resonate, and not only with investors, funders, um, and institutions, but also with some of the the government leaders. You know, it'd be nice to see uh, the premier of Alberta talking about synthetic biology and some of the applications for for up north in the tailings pond. That'd be a nice touch. Yeah, if you can put it into reasonable sound bites that they can remember, uh, that that's a cool topic to talk about. That's great. Yeah, so really, um, I guess that's kind of all the questions that we really wanted to ask you, or at least the really burning ones. If you have any uh, questions for us or anything like that. Um, not too much. I, I mean, it sounds like a, a great topic, and it sounds like obviously something that will resonate uh, not only with the oil and gas industry, but with the general public here in Alberta. Everybody mm -hmm. knows of this issue. Um, and what I'm excited about is seeing um, that you guys as a team are looking towards the biological applications for the tailings ponds. That's an enormous area of need and one that not even a lot of private sector companies are, are taking on right now. It's um, bioremediation, the environmental biotech side is one that I think is going to have tremendous potential over the next 10 and 20 years. And so it's great to see you guys taking a, a flying leap into that area. It's great to see. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. we were wondering, just because um, we're not really too certain how far biotechnology has kind of gone in Alberta right now. I realize that you guys are uh, striving to push for that. We're not too certain whether there is kind of this push for biology to be used. Well, I, I realize the oil sands right now kind of stay where they are because they're kind of content with the current state of affairs, but I don't know how much pressure there is from environmental groups or something like that to try and, you know, the green movement, everything like that, to try and use biology to remediate things. That didn't actually sound very... Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, Barry's getting some feedback there or something, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah there is, I mean, there's obviously a lot of pressure from the environmental groups. Um, there's always going to be some caution from... Um, from external groups in, in using anything biological as a potential cleanup, right? We yeah. found the same thing within the agri agricultural biotech industry and in, in probably the early 2000s. There was a lot of um, skepticism around um, genetically modified foods, genetically modified organisms, and people thought they were going to end up with killer tomatoes and, and runaway broccoli and all those type of things. So, you know what? That's that's faded and in, in the last number of years. We haven't really seen a lot of concern in North America for, for those type of topics. So, you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me off the start that there might be some initial skepticism in terms of using um, a new strain of bacteria or something within the tailings pond, but, um, you know, the, the strongest thing to stress would be, you know, I, I saw on your notes you guys are looking at things like the kill switch application and having safety backups and, and, and you know, the, the biotechnology space is one of the most highly regulated space areas within the entire world, mostly on the pharmaceutical side, but using some of those same uh, regulatory uh, thresholds and, and, and ideas uh, within projects within the environmental space is probably a good idea. And stressing uh, the safety factor for everybody is, uh, is never, never hurt the project. That's great, because that is exactly what we are hoping to do with this kill switch mechanism then. Great. Yeah, that sounds nice. Um, well, it looks like I think that should be everything. Actually, well, I guess uh, going back to uh, what you just said, if you don't mind just spending a little bit more time sure. discussing this, um, I realize you said that North America doesn't seem to be that 
uh, no longer as skeptical using genetically modified organisms. But I know there is a huge issue with it in like Europe and places like that. There is a large, um, there's a large amount of skepticism towards genetically modified organisms. Do you think that would kind of, you know, would that kind of opinion change? Do you see in the future, or is that just something we'll have to kind of go around? Yeah, I, I think. Uh Sorry, did I miss that? If you don't mind. Yeah, but. just I got that feedback again. It's like there's a plane that flies by every uh, couple of minutes or something. But, um, uh, such as the internet. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think I do think it will change. There, there are some differences uh, in the European Union. Uh, I just returned recently from a, a business trip to uh, New Zealand as well, as part of an agricultural biotechnology mission. And New Zealand uh, being one of the you know, genetically modified free zones. They're they're fairly anti-GM and and genetic engineering there. Mm -hmm. And and really, a lot of the issues that come up are around labeling. People uh, within those areas want to know what's inside their their foods or their products or anything like that. Um, I think the reality in the future of the world is that um, certain products. Um, are, are going to be, especially within the food industry, the uh, the agricultural industry are going to be, uh, they're going to need a lot of these biotech crops in order to basically to feed the rest of the world. Um, so, you know, the important thing is, um, I think across all subsectors of biotechnology is openness, transparency, uh, letting people know exactly what they understand Right. Um, it looks like uh, we're probably going to be running out of time here. So thanks a lot uh, for everything that you've helped us with. If there's any other questions, we would probably uh, just email you or something like that. That's yeah, no problem. Uh, available anytime. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Ryan. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye.